following program does not necessarily reflect the views, opinions, or policies of the City of Oceanside, its elected officials, KOCT, its board of directors, or staff. Community Health Matters was made possible by a grant from the Tri-City Healthcare District and with additional support from Tri-City Medical Center. Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Community Health Matters. Today's show is dedicated to sharing information with San Diego residents about a new high-tech healthcare service available at Tri-City Medical Center. Community Health Matters is produced by Tri-City Medical Center in conjunction with KOCT. I'm your host, Ricardo Barron, and we've got a fascinating show regarding robotic surgery. But before we get into that, I'd like to, to remind our viewers that this show is available in English and Spanish and also available online at koct.org. It's viewable on your iPhone, tablet, or desktop, and easy to share with friends and family. Now, let's get started. For four out of five adults will seek medical treatment for back pain sometime during their life. Thanks to breakthrough technology, such as the Mazor Renaissance Robotic Surgical Guidance System used in Tri-City Medical Center, those treatments can be safer and more effective than ever. Dr. Payam Moazas, one of Tri-City Orthopedic and Spine Institute experts, is here to tell us more about it. Doctor, good to see you. Thank you. Good Welcome to, you to Community Health Matters. What are the major challenges the spine surgery entails today? Well, spine surgery today is even more, more complex than it's ever been. The patients we are seeing not only have worse problems in their spine, more complex problems such as scoliosis, deformity, or twisting of the spine, there are also older patients that have more medical problems and in addition, they have a lot of osteoporosis or weakening of the bone. This makes the surgery very challenging for the spine surgeon. And in this 2013, the expectations are very high. Patients want to have one surgery, they want to be out of the hospital quickly, they want surgery to go flawlessly, and that, that they don't want to have any revision surgeries. So the expectations are quite high and the demands are quite high on the surgeon. Can you please describe the Mazor Robotics Renaissance technology to our viewers? The Mazor has really transformed my practice in spine surgery here in San Diego at Tri-City. This allows us to meet all those expectations and the challenging demands of patients today. What this allows us to do is to place screws in the spine, putting instrumentation in the spine with extreme accuracy, more than we ever dreamed of doing even as, two, as long as two years ago. So what advantages uh, does it offer to both surgeons and patients? Well, for the patients, we're able to place these screws with extreme accuracy. I'm talking about numbers better than one millimeter or one twenty-fifth of an inch of accuracy. Whereas before, the surgeon would have to look at the landmarks and guess where he thinks the best place is for the screw. Now the robot allows us to get it right every single time. And in addition, it cuts down on the length of the surgeries. It cuts down on the time for anesthesia, blood loss, infections, as well as the rate of revision surgeries or having to go back and redo an operation. Uh, we have not yet had to do that since we started this technology two years ago. So I go to sleep at night knowing that my patients have really <laughs> had the best surgery I can possibly give them, and it's, it's a very rewarding feeling. Yes, I, I'll bet. In which uh, spine uh, procedure is the Mazor system used at Tri-City Medical Center? You know, I'm glad you asked that, Ricardo. When we first adopted this technology two years ago, my partners and I, Dr. Lean and Dr. Dunlap, we said, well, you know what, we'll use this on our most complex surgeries, our revision surgeries or redo operations that are sent to us from other surgeons or complex spinal deformity where there's twisting or curving of the spine that changes the anatomy. When we saw how well these patients are doing, we asked ourselves, well, if we're using it on our hardest cases, why not use it on our bread and butter cases, patients that need maybe one or two levels of their spine addressed. And since that point, I've adopted it on every single case that I do at Tri-City. So who is the ideal candidate then for this technology? Anybody? Really any patient that has failed all non-operative measures. So although we have new invasive, minimally invasive techniques, robotic surgery, I always tell my patients really the best surgery you can have is no surgery. So we try things like physical therapy, pain medications, injections, chiropractic care. When all those things have failed 
and the patients are still having disabling back pain, then they're a good candidate for surgery. And when it comes to needing a spine operation, I feel that by far the best technology available today is robotics. Then how will you compare uh, the results that patients experience using the Mazor robotic technology versus uh, traditional surgical methods? Excellent question. You know, we've actually looked at that with our research department here at Tri-City, and we've compared how patients are doing now with the robot compared to two or three years ago before we adopted this technology. And on average, the length of stay now is 1.1 days shorter for patients that are receiving the same exact surgeries but receiving it with the robot as compared to the freehand techniques we were doing formerly. Doctor, how many years has this technology been available in Tri-City Medical Center and how many cases have you performed? I'm glad you asked that, Ricardo. You know, this technology is very new in the United States, but it's actually developed in Israel and they've done thousands of cases in Israel and Europe. Uh, here at Tri-City, we've had it for almost two years, I believe a year or nine months, and we've done over 250 cases. Uh, but over worldwide, there's been thousands of implants now placed with this technology with extreme accuracy. Earlier you talked about the ideal candidate. Can you please elaborate more Sure. On that? You know, I've really adopted it to every single patient that I operate on gets the robotic technology. But as far as the ideal candidate, um, definitely the more complex the surgery is. So, uh, for example, a revision surgery where the patient may have had five or six previous surgeries and it's now full of scar tissue. So, meaning all the normal landmarks that the surgeon used to rely upon, they're all gone and replaced with scar tissue. Those can be very challenging cases to look from the surface, know where the bone is, and where to place those screws. Well, for the robot, it doesn't matter how many previous surgeries they've had. It gets it right every single time. So I love using it for complex revision surgeries. We also talked a little bit about osteopenia or osteoporosis. Yeah. This is the weakening of the bone that we're seeing a lot in our elderly men and women. And um, the analogy my partner, Dr. Aline, uses is trying to hang up a big picture frame on a wooden stud. And you've got one nail and you try and get it in that wood. And if you have a nice strong piece of wood, most of the time the picture will hang up nice and straight and not go back and forth. Well now imagine that the wood has been eaten away, or in, as the example is osteoporosis, it's lost its bone mineral density, it's very fragile. Now trying to hang up that picture with one nail, you can imagine it may go back and forth, there may be some micro motion there. And the same thing can happen with spine surgery. So ideally if you could place that nail in on the first try, get it in the strongest part of the wood, that would give you the strongest construct. Before robotic surgery, the surgeon would actually take a sharp instrument and make a few attempts to figure out where the best part of the wood is. Now with the robot, we get it right every single time on the first try. And I think that's why we're seeing patients that now get up on the day of the surgery and their back pain is gone because the construct that we've created is so rigid, all that micro motion has been eliminated and that really improves the outcomes for our patients. Wow, thank you, Dr. Moses. This is an incredible result and uh, the technology is just outstanding. We have to go a short break, but when we come back, Dr. Moses will tell us more about the minimally invasive approach that Mazor system uses. This is Community Health Matters. Don't go anywhere. Colon cancer can be treated and cured with early detection. Patients should have colon cancer screening after the age of 50. If there's a family history of colon cancer, an even earlier screening time may be advised as this may place an individual at higher risk. If you think you're at increased risk and to learn more about the different methods for screening colon cancer, please contact your doctor. I thought indoor tanning was safe. They said their tanning rays were less likely to cause a sunburn. What you need to know is UV light from indoor tanning can cause premature aging, including wrinkles, sagging, and age spots. So instead of making you look cool, it can make you look old. And even worse, UV light can increase your risk of skin cancer, including melanoma, the deadliest form of skin cancer, especially when exposed at an early age. And treatment can be surgery, and sometimes even chemotherapy and radiation. In fact, current estimates are that one in five Americans develop skin cancer. And one person dies from melanoma about every hour. I don't want to be one of them. I don't want to be one of them. I don't want to be one of them. This message brought to you by the American Academy of Dermatology. I'm telling you, indoor tanning is not as safe as you think. In fact, Indoor tanning is totally out. 
Welcome back to Community Health Matters. I'm your host, Ricardo Verron, and I'm joined by Dr. Payam Moazas of Tri-City Orthopedic and Spine Institute. Tri-City Medical Center is the only hospital in San Diego County to offer the Mazor Robotic Surgical Guidance System, a unique state-of-the-art system that is changing the way our doctors treat spinal injuries. But I'm sure there are many questions in your minds about this system, such as what are the benefits of this minimally invasive approach and what are the possible risks of undergoing this treatment? That's why Dr. Paya Moazas will answer this and other questions. Doctor, thanks again for being here with us. Please guide us through the steps of spine surgery using the robotic assistance of the Mazor Renaissance. Please. Sure, Ricardo. There are really four main steps in using this technology. The first step is actually my favorite. It's in that a lot of the surgery is done before the patient ever gets to the operating room. So what this allows us to do is in a 3D virtual environment, I literally sit down the night before surgery on my couch at home and on my laptop, I'm actually doing a lot of the surgery ahead of time. And the way it works is a preoperative CT scan is obtained of the patient's anatomy. And this is plugged into some very powerful computer software. And it allows me to sit down and really plan out the perfect size instrumentation for that patient's anatomy. And this becomes very important because oftentimes, even from one side, from the right to the left side of the same exact bone, one screw may be 6.5 millimeters in width or diameter, and the other side you would have thought, well, we, that should probably be the same. It's actually not. And this allows you to really carefully look at the anatomy and realize actually that right side is a 4.5 millimeter screw. And this is extremely important because when we're placing these screws in the spine, there's very important structures there, such as the spinal cord, the nerve roots, big blood vessels. So you want to have this benefit of the extreme accuracy. So what this allows you to do is sit down and really plan out the perfect instrumentation for that patient's anatomy. And I literally sent out an email after I've done doing this to everyone involved in the operation. So when the patient's asleep in the operating room, a lot of the surgery has been cut out and we know exactly what's going to happen at every level of their spine. And the surgery just really you know, goes very seamlessly. And this helps cut down on the time and the bleeding, et cetera. What would be the risks on this treatment, doctor? Yes. Um, you know, we'll talk about the risks. I also wanted to tell you about some more of the, the steps. I went into the first step, but there's also three other key steps with using this technology. Oh, okay. The second is once the patient is in the operating room, the robot is then mounted to the patient. And there's many different options for mounting the robot to the patient. My favorite is a, a special bed mount where the robot actually attaches to the bed without any extra incisions and allows the, the robot to move up and down the patient's anatomy without any extra work. Once the robot has been attached, we then take two images of the patient's anatomy and the operating room. And these are done with an x-ray machine or a fluoroscope. And this is another benefit I haven't talked to you about yet, but this is a huge advantage of this technology is the way I was trained even just three or four years ago, we were still doing minimally invasive surgery, but it relied very heavily on radiation exposure on getting okay. intraoperative x-rays. Um, with minimally invasive surgery, the surgeon is no longer seeing with his own eyes what he needs to see, so you have to rely on something else, and that something else is usually x-rays. So by doing the incisions a lot smaller, not seeing all the anatomy, you need something to guide you down safely. So we would take a ton of x-rays in the surgery. Just to put one screw in the spine, we may take five or six x-rays. And that's a lot of radi radiation exposure, not just for the surgeon, but for the patient, the anesthesiologist, the nurses, the whole team involved. This has eliminated that. So we literally don't wear lead anymore, which is a nice advantage. We take two intraoperative x-rays, and the x-ray machine actually leaves the operating room and comes back at the very end just to check our work. And this allows you to do that. Once you've obtained those two images, that's then plugged into that computer software I was talking about, and it allows the robot to move up and down the spine. And that leads us to the fourth step, which is actually placing the instrumentation in the spine. And a lot of people have an, an image in their mind of the robot actually doing everything and manipulating the tissues. Um, I <laughs> just want, I want to tell you that's not what happens. It's, it's a very elaborate guidance system, but it's still the surgeon's hands that have the screwdriver, have all the drills and the instruments. It's just the robot tells me exactly where to go so that there's no mistakes. Are there any other steps before we talk about the risks? Th that's, those are the four steps. Awesome. And this really helps cut down on the risks. The major risks with these procedures are putting a screw in the wrong spot. And before the robotic technology, if you look at the spinal literature, there's about a 10 to 15% error rate with placing screws in the wrong spot. And that can mean the patient wakes up with severe pain, they need to go back to the operating room to have one of those screws revised, or they may have a permanent neurologic injury. 
and that can be catastrophic. With this technology, uh, you know, knock on wood, we have not had any of those um, complications happen since we started this two years ago. So it's really cut down on the error rate with placing the screws. In addition, if you're doing surgeries in a quicker amount of time with less bleeding, less anesthesia time, you can imagine the patients don't require as much pain medications afterwards. They're not in bed after the surgery. They're up walking with their physical therapist that same day. They're not getting all the infections associated with having the anatomy open for a long, prolonged period of time. So our outcomes are just far superior now that we're using this technology. Wow. Can you please elaborate more on the, the benefits of minimally invasive surgery? Besides uh, the, the patients walking the next day to probably their homes? Absolutely. Yeah, the patients are definitely leaving the hospital quicker now. And, you know, this is great for the individual patient, but also if you look at our healthcare system as a whole, uh, with the current economy, uh, people are lo really looking at how can we deliver the best care possible for the least cost. And I think this has really cut down, you can imagine, the cost associated with an extra one day of hospital stay per patient. Yes. You multiply that by hundreds of patients at each hospital, millions of patients across the United States. This really becomes a cost-saving measure as well. And I feel that that's one of the reasons this will eventually become the standard of care with spinal surgery, is insurance uh, companies and payers are going to say, well, if these surgeons are using this technology, their patients are getting up quicker, they're not needing more revision surgeries, and they're having better outcomes, we want everyone in our plan to have this type of surgery. And I think eventually, if we talk about this 10, 20 years from now, everybody's going to be receiving robotic spine surgery. Awesome, doctor. Now let's talk numbers. Uh, please tell us about the statistics outcomes for the different surgeons uh, performed, I mean surgeries performed with the Mazor Renaissance at Tri-City Medical Center's Orthopedic and Spine Institute. Absolutely. We talked a little bit about the error rates with placing mm -hmm. pedicle screws, about 10 to 15 percent if you look at the spine literature. And these are studies that are done by some of the top spine surgeons in, in the world today. Uh, with the robotic technology, there have been papers now written in our peer-reviewed journals showing the accuracy is over 99%, so extreme accuracy, night and day from the way, our, the way we're used to doing things. And that translates into better outcomes, so our patients are leaving the hospital quicker, and as we found in our Tri-City data, 1.1 days quicker on average. That is really, really good. Thank you, doctor. It is incredible information. I wish we had more time for this fascinating topic, but we have to take a short break. When we come back, we'll discuss the recovery process after undergoing robotic surgery. Stick around because there's more of Community Health Matters. Asthma should not keep you from doing sports. This chronic disease has not stopped many Olympic medalists from accomplishing their goals. Swimming is the most asthma-friendly sport of all, but cycling, walking, and sailing are also good options. Sun's out. Not up to it, huh? Well, maybe tomorrow, huh? Millions of children suffer from PI, primary immunodeficiency, a defect of the immune system that causes children to be sick over and over again. Early diagnosis can give your child a better quality of life, and you as well. Call 866-INFO-FOR-PI or visit us on the web. Okay, everyone, we have a lot to cover this morning. Tim should be here any second with the latest budget numbers to uh, take us through the initial schedule for production and... Ow. This is one way to avoid getting the H1N1 flu virus. <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. All right, good morning. Let's get this meeting started. For some better ways, visit flu.gov. <laughs> uh, anyone have a tissue? Cassandra Mearsong. Stephanie Lacastro. Excuse me. Have a seat, baby. Hey, have a seat. Sunny. 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 Sunny.
die of heart attack or stroke. Everybody stand clear. That was his wake up call. This is yours. The good news is, you can lower the risk of heart attack or stroke. Sir. Ask your health care provider how. To learn more, go to diabetesactnow.org. Welcome back to Community Health Matters. In our final segment, we will discuss the effects of post-operative recovery from robotic surgery. Back pain is a very common alignment that can prevent sufferers from performing everyday activities, as well as diminishing their quality of life. Tri-City Medical Center's Orthopedic and Spine Institute is providing its patients with a solution called robotic spine surgery. That's why Dr. Paya Moazas of Tri-City Medical Center will tell us what to expect from the recovery process and how can a patient benefit from the rehab programs offered here at Tri-City Medical Center Wellness Center. Doctor, thank you for uh, here, being here with us. It's been uh, really, really good information. What kind of outcome can patients expect from a robotic spine surgery? Oh, great question. You know, our, our outcomes are just phenomenal. It, it's very rewarding to have patients that come into the hospital who have severe difficulty even standing or walking, and literally the day of the surgery, they get up from the operation, and that nerve pain they have, that shooting sciatic type pain down their legs, is usually completely gone. Um, that can be very disabling for people that have stenosis or pinching of the nerves in the spine. And one of the goals of the surgery is, of course, to get rid of that. In addition, the back pain that they have going into the surgery is going to be replaced by a different type of pain, an incisional pain that's temporary and that heals very quickly as they recover from the surgery. But that severe, deep back pain that they had from the arthritis and the problems they had of their joints in the spine, that's also gone when they wake up from the surgery. Can you please describe what is the recovery like for a spine surgery patient? Excellent question. You know, it really depends on the extent of the surgery, but one thing I tell all my patients is they're going to walk that day of the surgery. So, okay. you know, with the tremendous physical therapy team that they have at Tri-City Hospital, the patients are going to wake up from anesthesia, they'll be in the recovery room for one to two hours, then they'll go up to our spine unit, and literally that same day they have a, a little black brace that they put on to give them some support, and they get up out of bed and walk around the hallways with the physical therapist. And this is, you know, really eye-opening for the patients because before the surgery, they often will tell me, you know what, there's no way I could have walked around for 50 yards, 100 yards without that severe pain down my leg, and now that pain is gone. So they actually enjoy walking, and that oftentimes they want to walk even when the physical therapists aren't available. And that's really the key for the first, the early post-operative period, those first few weeks after surgery. We want them to avoid any really strenuous activities, any twisting, bending, heavy lifting, and just work on walking for exercise. Once the spine has healed and they've healed from the surgery after those first few weeks, we actually start very aggressive physical therapy to work on those back muscles, the leg muscles, and the core muscles in the abdomen. Wow, that is really, really incredible. What uh, post-operative care should a spine surgery patient receive then? A very good question. Uh, my patients ask me all the, t all the time what to expect when they get home from the surgery. You know, there will be a little bit of care to do with taking care of the incisions, basically just changing the bandages, keeping it clean and clear of infection and they'll continue to work on their exercise. By walking around, this helps not only the nerves heal, but also prevents things like blood clots from setting in the legs, pneumonias, bed sores, all the things that we used to worry about before this robotic technology. So the more active they are, actually, the better for their recovery. And we encourage patients to walk five or six times a day in that post-operative period. But there's actually not a whole lot of care that needs to be provided once they get home. In your opinion, Dr. Weiss, Tri-City Medical Center's Wellness Center, a good place to follow up after surgery? Very good point. You know, we, we see patients as spine surgeons here in the North County who have received physical therapy all throughout San Diego at all of the leading physical therapy yeah. institutions. And I, I have to tell you that the patients just rave about the care they get at the Wellness Center, from the physical therapist to the staff to the equipment there. And uh, I think it's one of the keys to why we're having such great success with this technology is the physical therapy they receive postoperatively. Can you please explain how the aquatic therapy, the posture therapy, and the physical therapy offered at the Wellness Center can help a spine surgery patient? Absolutely. 
we had talked about the importance of staying active after surgery. And it's, it's tough because the patients all of a sudden feel a lot better and they want to do more. They want to go back to weightlifting or golfing or aerobics and we have to tell them, although you feel good, things are still healing on the inside and we need to take it easy. So I love using the aquatic therapy at the Wellness Center as a nice bridge or transition to their full recovery. And what that allows us to do is by eliminating some of the gravity with their underwater therapy there, they actually have special equipment including a treadmill under the water and by starting with some of the gravity eliminated, they can start doing those things they want to get back into without putting too much stress on the, on the operative area. And we do that for two to three weeks and then we, we bridge from that to a very aggressive land-based therapy at the Wellness Center. Doctor, what kind of uh, special uh, training does you and your team have to go through with this uh, revolutionary technology? Well, that's a very good question. You know, I'm a relatively new spine surgeon. It's my third year out from my training. And this technology is so new that even during my fellowship training, I wasn't exposed to any robotic spine surgery. So it's something that we had to kind of learn our, on our own. And what we initially did was visit another surgeon, Dr. Lieberman, in Texas. And we first just watched him do a case. And he had a very complex revision, very challenging spine surgery case that he made look so easy that Dr. Lean and myself who were there said, oh my goodness, this is something we have to bring to San Diego. And after watching his surgery, we went back and visited his operating room another time and actually did a computer version of the surgery and then practiced a surgery on a cadaver, uh, on a spine specimen. And that went flawlessly as well. And we started at that point doing our easier cases at Tri-City with a lot of help from the representatives from Mizor, the company that provides the robot. And one of the things that's been very rewarding to us now at Tri-City is we've actually done more cases at Tri-City than any other hospital on the west coast of the United States. So now we're getting to have surgeons come in from all over the country and even the world Last week I had surgeons from Turkey visiting our operating room to learn how to do this technology and we also will fly out to other hospitals and, and teach them what we've learned. We're not only helping our patients, we're also helping the patients of other surgeons across the world. That is really nice, Doctor. I've also heard of other uh, robotic uh, surgical methods here at Tri-City Medical Center. Why is this one different? That's a very common uh, question I get asked in the office is, is this like the other surgeries that are being done with the robot? in gynecologic surgeries or urology, general surgeries, and this is actually quite different from that technology. Although both are robotic, with that other system, the robot is actually manipulating the tissues and handling the, the patient's um, surgery. With this, it's more of an elaborate guidance system where it's still the surgeon's hands that are holding all the instruments and manipulating the patient's tissues. It's just that the robot tells me where exactly to put my hand and where to place the instruments. Where can our viewers and uh, potential patients get more information about this muscle robotic system? Certainly, they can visit the Tri-City Medical Center website or our office practice where Dr. Lean and Dr. Dunlap and I practice at Orthopedic Specialists in North County. We have offices in Oceanside and in Carlsbad. Well, thank you, Doctor. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Payam Mozas for joining us today. There are so many great health services available here in North County residents and it was very, very exciting to learn about just one of them here today on Community Health Matters. Remember, you can watch this episode again at koct.org and you can even share it with your friends and family and please do. These are all great services and they're right here in North County. So take advantage. I'm your host, Ricardo Verron, and this is Community Health Matters. Have a good day. The American Heart Association recommends consuming less than 1,500 milligrams of sodium daily. Less sodium can significantly slow down the rise of blood pressure that occurs naturally as we age. Even if you don't have high blood pressure, limiting sodium consumption is recommended. Community Health Matters was made possible by a grant from the Tri-City Healthcare District and with additional support from Tri-City Medical Center.